many people, it's difficult to imagine the impact of losing loved ones during the turbulent times of war. Just a couple generations ago, many families were faced with this very reality. While many cities across the country had to struggle with losing young men, many small communities had to accept losses that would change their way of life forever. As a Newfoundlander, I struggle with how devastating it must have been for the island to deal with the removal of these young men and women from society. How can a town of just over 1,600 people lose over 30 able-bodied youths that served overseas to manage to continue on and persevere? And how can one family recover from having six of seven siblings put their lives at risk to participate in a battle on foreign soil? These questions put life into perspective for those who look at the lasting impacts of the Great War. As Terry Goodyear puts it, we lost the cream of the Newfoundland youth in the First World War. The island of Newfoundland would never be the same. One of these youth was Stanley Charles Goodyear, a 26-year-old logger who, when not working in the mosquito-infested forest of the Exploits Valley in central Newfoundland, spent hours in the gym boxing and wrestling. Stanley was, for a time, a heavyweight boxing champion of Newfoundland, which was quite a feat considering that he was only 5'9 and weighed in about 180 pounds. But Stanley, as mentioned in the New, uh, Newfoundland Sports and Pastime Periodical, possessed great strength and skill and have won many a hard struggle, but no struggle would be. As hard as the one that he would face in the coming months when stationed overseas in Egypt from December of 1915 to February of 1916. To picture a Newfoundland, a Newfoundlander in the dry deserts of North Africa is enough to put a smile on one's face. And for three months, uh, the three months that Sergeant Goodyear spent in Africa with the 1st Composite Battalion of the Western Frontier Force must have been the most startling culture shock that Stanley could have experienced. But yet he survived, and after three months, he and the rest of the battalion sailed on to the port city of Marseille in southern France. The next days for the battalion were spent and trained on their way to Port Remy, a commune located in northern France. When the soldiers arrived in Port Remy after two o'clock in the morning, they were faced with a six hour hike, or six uh, kilometer hike to Virginie Labe, where they would be billeted out for a few brief days until their next mission. Little did the battalion know that within three months they would be, uh, they would face a battle that shared the name of the river that flowed along the banks of Port Remy, the River Somme. On April 13, 1916, the uh, 1st Battalion marched roughly 60 kilometers to the village of Engelbarmer, where they were received fresh reinforcements and within two days were ordered to the British lines, where they worked on improving the communication trenches. The Newfoundlanders in the 1st Battalion were also soon to be preparing for the upcoming British campaign that would be known as one of the bloodiest battles in human history. It was in early May when Stanley Goodyear was promoted to second lieutenant and was placed in charge of the regiment, regimental transport, a position that he would hold for the next 15 months. The following month was filled with training, trench fighting, heavy bombardment from the enemy, and of course rain. The 1st of July is an important day for Canada, but for Newfoundlanders, it was a day, it's a day of somber remembrance. Yes. While most Canadians are celebrating the anniversary of Canada becoming a nation, Many Newfoundlanders visit cenotaphs and memorials dedicated to the soldiers that lost their lives at Beaumont Hamel and at other battles. The first day of the Battle of the Somme was a devastating and defining moment for the Newfoundland Regiment and for the families at home. This tragic event, events at Beaumont Hamel became an enduring symbol of valor and sacrifice that had shaped the culture of Newfoundland. While the Goodyear family did not experience loss at Beaumont Hamel, they were soon to experience their first casualty as one of the five Goodyear brothers who enlisted died in early October of 1916. Raymond Goodyear was 18 years old. Well, it is not clear if 2nd Lieutenant Goodyear participated in, in the Battle of Bowman Hamill, 
It is likely that he was one of the ranks that were held back at Leuven Court before being ordered forward to the field and to the sport trenches in the afternoon of the first, after the worst of the fighting had abated. Much like Beaumont Hamel, it was unclear whether or not Goodyear was with the 1st Battalion at Yves Salient, but it was reported to that Goodyear had returned to Newfoundland on a leave with no reason given. Goodyear returned to the Western Front and on the first, with the 1st Battalion on March 14, 1917, and one, once again was attached to the transport section at the rear of the four fighting companies. The month of March was a time away from the front as the battalion had earned a much needed rest. The Newfoundlanders spent some time in Salé, Salisel and Amoro for baths and anti-trench foot treatment before they began training at bayonet, in bayonet, musketry, bombing and training for open warfare. In addition to the training, the battalion was treated to a church parade and some uplifting music provided by the regimental band from the depot in Scotland, which had been, which had acted as a pleasant distraction from the sudden outbreak of diphtheria in A Company. During this break, the battalion was also visited by pr the Prime Minister of Canada, uh, Sir Edward Morris, before the 50-kilometer march to Manchi le Pro. The island, or the village, sorry, of Manchi le Proof was, after Beaumont Hamel, the most costly day for Newfoundlanders, as they suffered 487 casualties on the 14th of April alone. This fight was part of a larger battle of Arras, uh, an attempt to support French troops, while which included the Canadian assault on Vimy Ridge. The month of May was a mixture of trench fighting and training, and of course, marching. Eventually, as June was nearly over, the Newfoundlanders, including Goodyear, were on the move again as they were ordered to Belgium and once again to the area of Yves. This new campa campaign was to be officially known as the Third Battle of Yves but came to be known as Passchendaele. It was during these long periods of fighting that Goodyear was promoted again to first lieutenant while the unit was being uh, behind the lines in training on August 1st in 1917. The first battalion became one of the most controversial battles. Uh, the, the battalion remained in Belgium participating along the British, French and Belgian troops and what became one of the most controversial battles of the Great War. The Newfoundlanders fought two major engagements at Steinbeck and on August the 16th and at Brombeck on October the 9th. It was during the night of this last engagement that Stanley Goodyear was leading a group of transport men up to the battalion with rations and water when an artillery shell burst near the group. The shell uh, killed five men, including Lieutenant Goodyear, who was buried just south, south, south of Landmark Church by the side of the road. It was on October the 28th, in 1917, that Lieutenant Goodyear was posthumously awarded the Milter Military Cross for, and I quote, for the most conspicuous and continuously good work as transport officer during the past 18 months in France. His resourcefulness invariably overcame all difficulties. Stanley and his younger brother Raymond were not the last loss for the Goodyear family. It was Headley Goodyear. It was killed in action on August of 1918. At the end of the Great War, only two of the five Goodyear brothers returned home. But they were both badly wounded. The only brother that remained home, as he was also as he was denied enlistment to avoid all poten the potential for all sons of the family being killed, was Roland, the oldest son. It was on January the third, in 1918, when the family received a letter from the Department of the Militia informing Mr. Josiah Goodyear, the father, that Stanley had been awarded the Military Cross and that he should be very proud of the high distinction and how the reputation of the Goodyear family and the high esteem by which they were held by all ranks in the regiment was a common knowledge. Newfoundlanders are a hardy bunch. They've grown up on the rock and endured incredible hardships time and time again. But this experience, especially, especially Beaumont Hamel, nearly broke. nearly broke the Newfoundlanders at home. British officers and Douglas, Sir Douglas Hagg, the commander-in-chief of the British forces, rode home to Newfoundland and proclaimed, quote, Newfoundland 
may well feel proud of her sons. I think, I think the heroism and deva uh, dovation, uh, dovation, yeah. no. devotion to duty they displayed on the 1st of July has never been surpassed. Please convey my deepest sympathy and that the whole of the armies in France in the loss of the brave, or from the whole of the armies in France in the loss of the brave officers and men who had fallen for the empire and for our admiration of our heroic conduct. Their efforts contributed to our success and their example will live. These words from abroad did little to prevent the grief suffered by the families back home on the island, but it managed to reinforce the shared sentiment that Newfoundlanders were a proud people who, despite the overwhelming odds, managed to persevere and allow those who were left behind to carry on for future generations. So, Sam, good year.